Hey people, so a while back I built a craft that flies using two thrusters and I thought I'd one up that and build a craft that flies using zero thrusters. And on top of that it does not have any gyros. So this is my gravity powered ship. It is uh, on the principle that a gravity generator will move an artificial mass block. Uh, but the thing is that it will, if connected to the same grid, uh, put a force on the mass block itself. So if we build something that is off axis, so if we put a gravity generator here, but we place some of the mass off axis so it is not directly accelerating towards the center of mass, it will spin around. And that's basically the whole concept here. So let's just get in and fly a bit about. So I fly like I normally would. My mouse uh, tilts us around. I can roll, I can fly, it'll fly straight, it'll break itself down if I let go of the keyboard. And uh, yeah, it generally flies like a normal ship would. And I also can disable inertial uh, dampness, so I'll just float through space, enable them again, and keep going. So yeah, for all accounts, it flies like a regular ship. Uh, with a few downsides and a ton of upsides. Well, not a lot of them, but some amazing ones. So, uh, gravity generators have an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second, approximately, so 1 g. Meters per second can also be seen as newtons per kilogram. Newtons we know from our thrusters and from physics, if you had that. So each mass block weighs 50,000 kilograms, meaning that each gravity generator, since it's 9.8 newtons per kilogram, has a force of 490 kilonewtons. Now a small thruster has a max thrust of about 320 kilonewtons, meaning that one gravity generator on one block is equal to 1.5 small thrusters. So since I have two generators on one axis here, that is equal to three small thrusters in each direction since the gravity generators is directional. So these two gravity generators is equal to having this and this. And now multiply that by four since I have four blocks. And since I have the same in every direction, you can put that in every direction. In total, that is it just for the up-down direction. Then we have the same for side to side, same for forwards and backwards. So quite a bit of thrust there. Um, and the amazing thing on that is we are drawing, as you can see down in the corner, 16% of our small generator here. 17% uh, when we're going, and maybe up to 18 when all the generators working. Nope, 17 we're sticking to. So almost no power for a heck of a lot of thrust. And this is, uh, well, multiplicative. So if we were to add more mass blocks, more thrust. And the great thing, and the thing I have spent a lot of time on, is that it is self-scaling. So this script is one I'm going to release with this video, at least in a better version. I have some things I want to iron out, but it is working, and that means it is very, very easy to use. So let's just build a ship that uses this, and make it a bit more powerful. So let's just move over here. I'm going to build a... Yeah, I'm going to build a rod here. So just a good old long rod, and I'm gonna mirror it in what I think is just about the center, so we can save some build time. Let's see, is one more down. All right. So this time I want to use four mass blocks instead of uh, the one mass blocks. Yeah, four mass blocks on each corner instead of the one I used over there. So let's just build that. Now we want to turn them all off before we proceed because when we place the gravity generators they're going to be on and uh, we don't want the whole thing getting blasted into the asteroid. So let's just turn off all the mass blocks 
and slap on a good bunch of graphics generators. Actually, I want to show something first. So the way the script works is that it will look for these four corners and it will self scale. So if I were to remove these blocks and add that there, remove these blocks and add that there, uh, remove that one, add that there, and just have a single one here. And of course add some reactors for power. So let's add, I think we're gonna add four this time. We're gonna have quite a few gravity generators. Oh, now that is gonna get propelled. Um, oh well. Now if we look at the gravity fields here. So let's show gravity range. Let's take all our gravity generators and show them on the HUD. As you can see, full on gravity field. It is max size as it usually is when you create a gravity generator. Now the script is going to go in and check the mass blocks around it. Oh yeah, I need a cockpit for this to work. All right, so let's try that one more time. There we go. So the script checks the mass blocks and adjust the gravity field to just encompass. It makes the field as small as it can be to still encompass the gravity generators, the, sorry, the mass blocks that the gravity generator is uh, placed on. Seems to fold a bit uh, with the tree one because it takes a center over here, but then again, this is made to be symmetrical. If you don't use it in a symmetrical way, it's gonna get a bit wonky, but it'll still kind of work. Anywho, let's uh, remove these and let's get back to building the thing. Alright, so we have one in each corner, we're gonna keep placing here, so... And again, we're just gonna turn off all our mass blocks, because otherwise we're gonna have a problem, like you saw with the ship getting propelled into the asteroid. Now for a bunch of gravity generators, and as mentioned, they're gonna be auto scaled. You don't have to adjust anything. You just have to build the ship, place the script, and everything will work. All right. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm gonna recompile the script. It's gonna fix all the gravity fields. We can enable the artificial blocks, and we should be able to float around. So yeah, I can yaw, I can go up and down, there's quite a bit more acceleration. Uh, if you check the speed down in the left corner, we are now at 100 meters per second and we can fly without drifting or anything because we have an absolutely insane thrust to mass ratio here. So yeah, as you can see this is just this is overpowered basically. We're using 35% of our four reactors here. So in theory I could actually, let's just remove two of these. Should have enough power still. All right, we are at 67, 68. Uh, we're gonna get a 71%. So yeah, massive thrust weight ratio rolling on two small reactors. And if we do the numbers quickly here on the amount of force we're dealing with here, we have eight gravity generators in each direction for each uh, corner, and we have eight blocks. So eight times 50,000 times 9.8, about 31.4 mega newtons per side, per corner here, in each direction. So that's... Um, 31 mega newtons forwards and backwards, 31 mega newtons up and down, and side to side in each corner, so about 120 mega newtons, and then some for each corner. Let's just check what uh, I can on the top of my head. Remember how much thrust an iron thruster provides, a large one. So that f puts out 4 mega newtons. So this is basically this craft is basically equal to having 30 is that right yeah 
30 large thrusters in each direction. So 34 up down, 34 side to side, and 34 back and forth using two small reactors. Uh, so this is, I mean, there's no reason to even use a thruster compared to this. Plus you don't have to get platinum for the freaking thrust elements, so that's great. Now, the downside of this is how it works in natural gravity. Basically, gravity generators are reduced in power by 2% for every 1% of natural gravity. So at 0.5 Gs, they will have zero power. But that, will, that also means that they work on up to 0.5 Gs. And the moon has 0.25 Gs at the surface, so it will have half power at the moon, still about 60 meganewtons uh, for this here craft in each direction. And uh, which it well, that's more than enough. That's uh, 15 large thrusters in each direction, more than enough to make a surface to orbit uh, craft. But it will not work on the Earth or on the alien planet, and well, any planet that has more than 0.5 g's gravity. So to finish off here, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and copy paste the big red ship and then make it able to take off from the moon using only this system and no thrusters. So uh, yeah, let's do that. Alright, we are on the moon. So two things I'm gonna do. First off, I'm gonna take all the thrusters off this ship and turn them off. There we go. Next off, I'm gonna check the gravity generator because we do not want the gravity field on that to uh, interfere. So what are we gonna do? We are gonna we are gonna reduce it by. Yeah, that should be fine. I just don't want it to you know uh, interfere with um, the mass blocks we're gonna place. All right, that looks about right. Good. So let's retrofit it. I'm not going to remove the thrusters because that's going to take a bunch of time. So let's just mirror this baby up and get to work. All right. So I'm just going to build. Am I going to build a stick? No, I'm not going to build a stick. Yes, I'm going to build a stick. All right. Some mass blocks, some gravity generators. I don't care about turning them on or off because we are locked with landing gear to the ground. So that's going to be fixed once we turn on the programmable lock. Now I think I want... Yeah, let's just do it like that. We don't need that much thrust to lift this, I think. It doesn't have that many. Um, thrusters to begin with. So yeah, this is going to reduce our... Well, we're going to have most uh, thrust in the up-down direction and least uh, in the side-to-side -side and a medium in the forward-to-backwards. Uh, normally you would place this specifically around the center of gravity. This may be a bit unstable because I'm just placing it rather randomly, but uh, it should work nonetheless. Alright, let's place another one here. Alright, oh yes, I should also turn off the gyros. Anyhow, let us place a, whoop, uh, forgot about the gravity field, let's place a, 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 a programmable block here and get this puppy going. So, off with the symmetry, let's turn the gyroscopes off, take this here programmable block and stuff in our coat. There we go. That should be it. Um, hopefully it takes the correct cockpit. It's just supposed to take cockpit number one. Now, what is that massive field we have there? Oh, yes. It, uh, my script takes all the gravity generators. And since, um, yeah, we have the main one on the ship. Just gonna turn that off. Uh, this script does not handle you having a gravity generator that isn't used for drive. 
it will actually mess things up rather badly. In most cases, I intend to make a, an addition where you can go in and say exclude or something in the custom data and it will ignore that specific gravity generator. Also, assuming that you have reduced the field so it doesn't hit the mass blocks. Anyhow, we should be good to go. So let's try popping off the parking brakes here and take off. So it's pitching a bit back, but uh, as you can see, it's accelerating pretty fast upwards. And um, yeah, it is flying. Um, could be going a bit faster. I think we need more mass blocks, more gravity generators, but we are replacing quite a few um, quite a few, um, what are they called, thrusters in the process and we are using practically no power. Also keep in mind that since we are this close to the moon, the power of the gravity generators is reduced by 50%. So yeah, it's going to be twice as uh, much thrust once we get out into uh, space. And again it's pitching a bit because we didn't take send off Mars into consideration. But uh, yeah, here we go. So. That is uh, that is it, I think. That is a bit of a demonstration of retrofitting a ship to uh, use the system. You could, of course, place it inside. Uh, the closer to the center of mass you place them, the less authority you will have. Um, meaning that if you place them like very close to the center line, uh, you will not roll as efficiently, uh, as fast. You would get more force if you put them a bit further out. Anywho, yeah, I think that's all. As you can see, this is a bit uh, more massive ship. It weighs uh, 3.6 million and it is accelerating towards the ground a bit. We're moving, well, we're still slowing down, but we are probably going to even out at about 1.9 meters per second towards the moon. And that's because I haven't implemented the braking thing yet. Right, yes, that is all. Uh, I am completely up for suggestions here. I would love some, uh, well, of course, uh, comments on bugs and stuff like that, uh, ideas for improvements on this script, and just general feedback. Um, as I said, it is in the description below. It is published as of today as a beta. I'm still adding stuff. Um, so yeah. Anyhow, thank you for watching and see ya.